Now, the experience of women in the armed forces is too often coloured by unwanted sexual advances and indeed abuse. The House of Commons Defence Committee today released a new whistleblower evidence report cataloguing heart-rending case histories gathered by an occupational health team working with the military. Two years ago, the committee reported that two-thirds of women serving reported bullying and sexual abuse. And that certainly wasn't the first inquiry of its kind, which inevitably raises questions about why the issue isn't being tackled more effectively. Seema has been covering this story for years and has this. All British Armed Forces roles are now open to women. But if women are winning battles like this, there's a greater firefight raging over sexual misconduct, according to new evidence submitted to the Defence Committee. It paints a grim picture of some of their experiences, with alleged rape and sexual assault at the forefront. We've picked out some anecdotes given to the committee by whistleblowers. A junior servicewoman was raped on base by someone with whom she'd been in a casual relationship. When she reported it to her medical centre, the GP advised her to choose her partners more carefully in future. She was persuaded by another GP to report the incident to her COC. However, on doing so, it was deemed by the COC, in consultation with the GP who persuaded her to come forward, too important for the career of the rapist and the elite unit he served in. To keep him in place, so she was moved across the country, out of that elite unit, against her will. The submission suggests a significant proportion of service women experience unwanted sexual behaviour in service, and many are reluctant to report or seek help. A service woman was groped, forcibly kissed, and exposed by a male colleague at a unit Christmas party. She initially did not report the incident, but eventually decided to report the incident to her COC. However, when she did so, her COC explained to her that it was Christmas and a party, so she should understand that things get a little out of hand, and nothing was meant by it. The government wants to double the number of women in the military by 2030. Currently, there are almost 17,000 serving across all three services, around 11% of total personnel. But more allegations of sexual misconduct could discourage women from signing up. I've been reporting on women in the military for more than a decade now. Sexism in the forces has been a headache for the leadership for years and points to the need for a cultural change, especially among male comrades. MPs on this committee, along with some people serving, say that the change has been slow-paced and frustrating and ask if the military won't change now, when will it become a safe place for women? A young servicewoman in training awoke in her room on base to find a male member of training staff smelling her underwear. Previously, she'd woken up to find him watching her sleeping. When she finally reported him, she was advised that her training would be cut short and she would be removed from the cohort whilst her allegations were investigated. It's been a couple of years since the Defence Committee published a report on protecting women in the forces. In it, it says 58% of serving women reported experiencing bullying, harassment and discrimination. Some might argue that banter, including sexual banter, has always been a part of military culture. The evidence sent to the Defence Committee suggests victims are having to choose between their career or their sanity. The government says, we have launched the Independent Serious Crime Unit and have made sure that complaints of bullying, harassment or discrimination are dealt with outside of the chain of command. It says these measures sit alongside a comprehensive improvement package, including a new victim and witness care unit and policy reforms, such as our new zero tolerance approach to unacceptable sexual behaviour, which will ensure that anyone convicted of a sexual offence will be dismissed from service. The armed forces has always prided itself on professionalism. Be the best, it says. But on this issue, the evidence says they're still falling far short. I'm not a miss or a missus. I'm a sergeant. 
Seema Katecha reporting there. Well, we did invite the Ministry of Defence to join us tonight, but nobody was available. But to discuss this further, we are now joined by Emma Norton, founder of the Centre for Military Justice. Welcome to Newsnight, Emma. Um, we got a sense from Seema there of some of these awful case studies. Was there anything in this that surprised you? Um, no, it's always shocking, but it, it wasn't surprising. And it follows from last year's sexual harassment survey, which showed a massive uptick in the number of women that are disclosing very what they're describing as particularly upsetting behaviours. And it reflects exactly the kinds of cases that women are bringing to us and wanting advice about. A big increase. Yes. At the same true. time that we're hearing all these phrases from the previous report two years ago about tackling the problem. What's going on, do you think? Well, the other thing that the Ombudsman showed this year was, was that the proportion of women that are actually reporting, making formal reports when they experience these things, is actually dropping. So it is very, very concerning indeed. That's extraordinary, though, those, those two trends. Um, you've represented in, in proceedings many women who've, who've suffered uh, abuse of this kind. What are the chances, do you think, of them finding justice in, in, in the current system? It's very, very difficult. Um, a, a lot of women contact us because they've suffered sexual violence or serious sexual harassment. And the truth is that if you, the, the prospect of you securing a, a successful outcome in a military court if you've been the victim of rape are far, far lower than they are if you're in the civil system. But that's in a civil system that only convicts yeah. in a it does. scarily small proportion of rape yeah. cases. So it's, it's even worse it's than in... It's even lower. Yeah. If you compare the number of uh, rape cases that actually get to Crown Court before a civil jury, the, the, the conviction rate in some recently published research was around 75%, so that's pretty high. Of course, the majority of cases don't get that far, but of those that do, the, the proportion is very high. The proportion at court martial is just short of 18%. So it's a completely different um, ballpark. It's just a dreadful, dreadful statistic. And they have said uh, that they are stepping up their investigate independent serious crime unit within the, within the forces. Mm. Uh, that's one of the things, one of the responses we had from them today. Is that an answer to, to the situation you've it's just described? It's definitely a step in the right direction. I notice they're calling it an independent serious crime unit. It's the defence serious crime unit, so it still sits within defence and it is a branch of the, the military police. But the idea of that is that it is going to uh, encourage greater specialism, greater expertise, and they want to um, involve more civilian in, input into that. Um, I, it's far too early to say whether it's going to have the, the impact that we hope it's going to have. And, and it certainly doesn't seem likely to address the problems that I've just indicated that happen when you appear before a military board. That's a military jury at a court martial. I don't see how the Defence Serious Crime Unit is going to affect that problem. I mean, lastly, I was looking at a report today that was published in 2018. I mean, th this. Uh attention has been on this issue for quite a while. You said at the beginning, if anything, it seems to be getting worse. Is there anything that gives you optimism that, this, that a, turn, a corner could be turned? It, it does feel like Groundhog Day and the recommendations that keep being made time and time again to the Defence Secretary, he keeps rejecting. So there are two principal principal recommendations. One is that military rape cases need to go to the civilian system and the other is that serious sexual harassment complaints need to be taken away completely from the single services. But on those two issues he just will not budge. Emma Norton, thank you for that. Well, if you're affected by any of the issues we've just been talking about, the BBC has pulled together a list of organisations who can help. Just search for BBC Action Line.